Hey friends, what's up and welcome back to this new video about Editor X. This time we're checking out the interface of the app and the basic elements, the basic components that you can use to create awesome websites. We have a very cool website example right here. It's for a gaming startup and it's uh, very well made, very beautiful designed and it has certain kind of elements uh, that are relevant for a normal website as well for a very simple one and we will check them out right now. But before we will do that, as I said, we will check out the interface of the app and I will explain every part of that right now. So let's start out with the top navigation. Here we have the Editor X logo and we have some sort of menu regarding our personal account, our own websites and account settings and so on. So the normal stuff. Then we have a few more things that are relevant for the site that we are working with right here. We have site settings. Here you can save your website, publish it, or you can access general info, also a site history which is pretty awesome all of those different saved um, states will be visible right there and you can access them and you have more info and settings regarding as i said the website that you're creating right here next up is view here you can zoom in zoom out or reset your zoom level to 100 percent this is very helpful if you're working on details if you want to zoom in and work on a few different elements right there and you can as i said reset your zoom which is super necessary as well next up tools here you can access your design library. The design library is something that you can also of course uh, create in here or navigate to your existing ones and then open them, delete them, duplicate them or edit them. Dev mode. Here you can turn on the dev mode which means you will be able to add your own custom code. You can also connect external APIs and you're able to just work in a more development kind of uh, interface. This right here could be turned on and it will look like this. So you see you have your site structure enabled now. You have certain properties right here. You have your custom page code and then you have your site structure right here which you can navigate through and just access your sites pretty easily. Let me turn it off for now because we want to explore the normal layout a little bit more. We have the help center which will help you right here if you need any uh, different information, if you need any help, if you have any questions. You have the academy which will also help you to learn uh, Editor X even more. And you have a forum and some other helpful uh, things like request a feature, re uh, request uh, report a bug and so on. Next up is apps. Apps are things, are widgets and features you can add to your websites. Uh, you can also um, access the apps from the app market that is right here and this way you can add multiple features as I said that are not that static but have an individual kind of content for example your MailChimp forums or whatever so this is pretty popular um, and this is pretty helpful if you want to add some more interactive and individual content uh, like widgets. And last but not least, upgrade. As I said in the first video, you can create free websites with Editor X, but if you want to add a custom domain or if you want to remove the branding or whatever, you can upgrade your plan to a premium plan. Make sure to check that out if you're interested in that. But as I said, it's a beta, it's still in the beta and also free to use. So you don't have to buy any upgrades or whatever. So let's check out the second navigation bar that we have right here, which is this pretty uh, important one. We will start out from the left to the right, add elements. This is the set of features and components that you can drag and drop into your website layout. So we have some quick, quick add with the most important ones and we will look at them in a few seconds. And next up we have the design assets that you can save in here. We have compositions, which are pretty awesome. They are pre-created and layering tools, text tools buttons and some very cool other features that you can explore if you want to. Next up is the layer panel. You will know it from your favorite design app. Of course, it also has a layer panel and it has a certain structure. It has the page at the top and then it shows the all the, the different um, sections from the top to the bottom. We start out with the header and then all those sections will follow. And at the bottom, we have a footer and you see this little 
a green icon in here, which means that there is a side master, which is exactly what this third icon represents. We have side masters and side masters actually represent those reusable components or symbols or whatever you want to call them, which are going to be used across multiple pages on your website. For example, as I said, the header or the footer part of your website will be mostly reusable elements because you don't want to create an individual one for each different website but you want to use them across your whole website. Next up is pages. So pages are different sites across your whole website project um, and for example you will have your home page, your, your main page in the end, you will have a contact page, you will probably maybe have a shop page or whatever or different like about us or whatever. All those different pages um, have a place in here in the page panel. You can add new pages, you can search for pages if you have a very large website project um, and you can access them from within this panel right here as well as the light boxes which are also a very cool feature. Next up is the theme manager. In your theme manager you can access your typography and colors and also edit them and select them and change them as well as accessing the design libraries which we also talked about before. Here you can change the library that you're working with. You see that there are a few changes happening uh, in here and these will then also change across your whole website project. Next up, App Market. As I said, you can access it from this first bar as well and add your favorite website uh, widgets or whatever. And last but not least is the content manager. This is something we will focus on in an upcoming video because it's a little bit more complex. And this video, as I said, is only about the main functions, the main features and also the interface. So let's go over to the middle part of this uh, interface. We have our page selection right here. We can also manage pages from here. And as I said, change them. And then we have the viewports. We have the desktop viewport, tablet viewport, viewport or mobile viewport and you can switch between them and just check out how your website will look on a different viewport. As I said, they are pre-determined uh, right here, but you can also customize them by clicking on those little three little circles icon and then edit those viewports. You can also of course set a custom viewport if you want. Just add your pixel amount, hit enter or use those little dragger uh, selectors right here and then rescale your viewport. And on the right side, you will have an undo and redo button, which are also kind of cool because you can just flip left and right if you want to undo a certain change. And very important, and this is super important, you will know it from your favorite design app as well, the inspector. The inspector is basically the panel which will show all of the different settings of a certain element. So if I select this text right here, you will see that we have some kind of uh, alignment features at the top. We have some sizing features. Here you can uh, switch between a fixed and a fluid sizing and change all of those settings from within the panel. Of course, you can choose between pixels. You can also choose between um, the viewport height, viewport width or the percentage. And in here you can change the position and the dockings of your uh, selected layer. Make sure of course to always check and determine any margins if necessary and what you can also do is change any scrolling effects. You can adjust the, the rotation of the element and have a certain grid area as well as add an anchor to it. So these settings right here regarding a certain layer are pretty straightforward and are mostly the same for all of the different layers. But if you want to actually change some of the settings of these layers, you will need to click and select the layer and then hit, for example, in this case, edit text. This will give you a new menu which will now uh, give you a certain settings like headings right here or the font itself can be changed as well. And also you can change of course the font size and in here we have a certain spectrum of font sizes that are available for uh, the resizing effects. Then we of course are able to customize the text even more and once we've done that we can just deselect the layer and changes will be made uh, available to it. We can add different animations to it and I will uh, create another tutorial video about that so check it, that out as well. And uh, we can change some more settings in here 
and access a little panel which helps us to duplicate the layer, to hide it if you want to, or to delete it. And all of those different settings that you see right here are also available in the layer panel if you click on this little icon. So you have multiple spots where you, you can access those settings. If you selected a certain layer and you want to go back into the previous kind of parent item, the parent container or the parent section, you can just uh, hover this little text uh, breadcrumb and then select the container or even the whole section of it. Next up, I want to show you all of the different basic elements that you can work with in your website creation process. You can click here to add an element or also use the panel that we have from here and we will go through it step by step. So I already showed you the title, but let's drag it in here and let's check out some of the settings that we can uh, change. Of course, we have our inspector already. We can also uh, hide it if we don't need it right now. And next up, we can change the headings which are pre-created. You can also, of course, update them and they will be changed. Um, you can also access them from in here. And uh, what you can also do is to, as I said, change the font, change the font size, change some of the, those customization settings, and also, of course, the color of your font. So this is pretty straightforward as well, but let's check out a paragraph and drag it in. We have it right here. We can make sure to align it on the, the left side to the title. And in here we have basically the same settings as the title setting, but we can change some of those paragraph styles in here. Next up, let's add a button to our website. You will need buttons in your website creation as well. In here we can change the text and we can even add a link to it, of course. But if you want to add a certain style to it, you would probably go into your inspector and search for it, but you won't really find it because there's a little pencil icon right here. And if you click that, you will be able to change all of the different style kind of settings for a element like the button. And you will also notice that in other elements as well. For example, we can change the background fill color in here. Let's change it up to something uh, in the blue area, maybe like that one. We can add a border or even remove it as well. And we can also access different things like the shadow and the text. And in here we can change the color of it and uh, add a different theme. So this is pretty awesome. You can change the hover effects and hover behavior as well. Um, and this will help you to customize your design even more. Okay, next up is adding an image, of course. You will probably add images to your website. And here we can access those settings for an image. We can change the image. And if you click on that, we get this little pop-up showing us the different images that we already uploaded. But you will be able also to just choose different images from Unsplash, for example, or from Shutterstock and uh, search for different ones as well. So this is a nice little window that we can use. Let's check out the settings that we can change in here. We can adjust the image if you want to adjust brightness or colors of it, and we can change it from here as well and reset it to the original one as well. When the image is clicked, here we can select what happens. A link opens. If we select that, we can add a link to it and we, add some, we can add some scroll behavior as well. If you want to change the design of the image, you can add a certain fill to the background. For example, if you have a PNG file with a transparent background, we can change the opacity of the image and fade it out a little bit and you will see the background color coming up and if we change that to something in the blue area, you will see it even more. We can add a border if we want. In this case, I'm gonna remove it because I don't want it to be here. And next up is to add some uh, radius. If you want to add a radius to have some rounded corners right here, you can do that in here as well and also enable a shadow if you want. Of course, you can also crop your images and move the focal point of this, cropping an image will of course do what it says to crop it in here and to give you a certain cropped version of it. We can apply it and then just reposition it again. And we can set a focal point. And the focal point is important if you resize the image because of a change to the 
the, mo the mobile viewpoint, for example, and the image will be cropped or something like that, you can change the focal point and set it to the point which should be visible in the resized version of it. So if you want to, to display the mountain, of course, just drag it in here or to this top left corner. If you want to have the bottom area visible or the, the right area, drag it in this area and it will do that in the changed or resized version. And last but not least, of course, you are able to add videos to your websites. You can change the videos in the same kind of window that you have been checking out before for your images. And here we can add some more settings. We can change the video, we can even reset it and tell Google more about it as well. Regarding the focal point, we can do that for the video as well and select a certain area of it that will be visible if we crop it for a maybe mobile version or something like that. And we can change the behavior of the video. We can set it to play on click, play automatically, play on hover or whatever, and change some more of these video kind of settings. We can also disable the sound if we just want to have a muted video. And we can again change some of those designs. And this design is, as, as I said, always this little pencil in here. Here we can change the cover image to a different one or fade it out and we can have some pattern overlay, some contours and borders. All of these settings can be changed for the videos. Friends, I hope you learned something today. The interface and basic elements and components of working in Editor X. Check it out, try it by yourself. As I said, it's a free app and you can create awesome websites in it without having any coding skills. So definitely check that out. I hope you had a great time watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, hit the thumb up on this video and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for tuning in and we will see us in the next one. Bye.